Okay, hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So in this video, we're going to explore the PyQt5 Qtable widget. So this is one of the many widgets that PyQt5 provides us with. So we're going to explore how this table works, how to load some data into this table, and how to select different items from the table and perform all sorts of operations. So without further ado, let's get started. So to prepare for this tutorial, this is what I have set up. So this is a sort of basic UI designed in PyQt5 Designer. Now, if you're completely new to this, here's what I suggest that you do. I have a short four minute video, I believe, concerning how to install PyQt5 as well as installing Qt Designer and how to actually, after installing it, actually find Qt Designer and be able to open it and create GUIs with it. So it's a very short video. If that's what you're looking for, if you're not exactly sure how to operate PyQt5 or Qt Designer, then watch this video first and then you can directly resume with this video. Otherwise, you can just continue. So this is a simple UI designed in Qt Designer. What this UI has is basically nothing. It just has a styled background as, as well as this rectangle right here, which is just styled in a sort of pinkish color, as well as a label. So this is a text label displayed on the screen. It has no value whatsoever, whatsoever except just being a display widget. It does not take neither input nor give out output. So it's just a label. So this is what we have so far. There is no table yet. All right, so let's get started. Let's actually put a table on the widget and, and just start working with it and start the code. Here we have these two different groups of items, you could say. So let's just check this out. So we have the item views versus the item widgets. So we have these two different type of tables. There is the table view versus the table widget. Now, many could argue here that these two things could essentially produce the same output or visualize the exact same table. However, the functions inside the code differ for each one. So for this tutorial, we're going to work with the table widget. Maybe in a future tutorial, we can work with the table view as well as the tree view, as well as different types of PyQt5 widgets. So let's just grab a table widget from here and drag it onto our screen and we can just maximize it and here we go, so we have an empty table. Now this looks sort of like an empty square with pretty much nothing inside it. Well, that's because we haven't really added anything to this table. So here's what we have, it's called table widget. So this is the object name and it's empty. So to add some columns to it, all I have to do is right click and press edit items. And now I can create some columns. So here I can say name and then I can say age and then I can say address, for example, and this is what we have. And if I press OK, I now, have, I now have these columns. Now these columns obviously look a bit too small for the table right now, but they are resizable if I preview. So if I control R and I open up a preview for, the, for this um, dialog in Qt Designer, this is what I have. And I can resize these different columns as well as select columns and sort of do different types of things. So this is sort of what we have for now. This is everything that we've done manually. Now we can choose to add rows manually as well. So if we go here, we have rows, we can add a new row and have this row sort of have a label to it. So I can say uh, first name, for example, and then if I add this row, here I go, I have a row and, a, and columns right here. And I can add these different types of rows. So for now, for our thing, we're not going to have rows. However, if you choose to have them, then that's totally okay. So going back to the code, so this is PyCharm, and this is what we have. So this is basically a simple program. Now, if you're confused as to why there is code on the screen, let me just tell you that this code is simply just what is required to be able to launch this application and sort of launch this window. So if I run this app, so let's just run it. This is what I get. So this is essentially the same thing that I just saw when I was trying to preview this dialog. We have not coded anything related to the table just yet. So I'm just going to go over the code quickly in case someone is not familiar with PyQt5 at all. So I'll be able to explain it. Otherwise, if you already know this, then you're definitely good. So here I just have the required imports to be able to run this application. I have a queue application so I can create an app and run it. I have a queue dialog, which is essentially what we're opening. So it's the sort of window that we have. I have Qt widgets. So Qt widgets contains everything from queue dialog to queue text edit to sort of everything else. I have the load UI function that we import from this 
module right here and this load UI function is what allows me to load a UI that we designed in Qt Designer by using the drag and drop functionalities of Qt Designer and load it into our Python code with just one line of code without having to code every single part um, of this dialogue. All right, so that's pretty much it for the imports. Now, for what the actual window is, so we create a class called main window, and this class, this main window is actually a queue dialog, like we just said. We define the constructor function, and then we just have to say that we want to load the UI for this constructor inside the constructor when we're initializing, when we're opening, when we're, op when we're opening up a new window. We want to load this UI, which is called table tutorial.ui, which is what we actually saved the as right here, and we want to open it up. So that's basically it for defining the sort of class. And then to actually run this application, we create an app and it's a queue application. We create a main window or any sort of variable and we, init we instantiate a new um, instance of this class. And then we add this to a queue stacked widget, which is what we use in case we ever want to navigate, navigate between different pages. And then we set a fixed width and height for this and we widget.show to be able to actually display it on the screen and then we execute our application. So very briefly, that's sort of how everything works within PyQt5. So now that you know that this is the code required to run this application, let's add the parts related to our table. Now going back here, let's just verify what the object name for this table is and it's simply called table widget. All right, so we can get started. Now for table widget inside our constructor, we sort of need to set some maybe, um, let's say dimensions for this table. So if you wanna set the column widths, so like we said here, when we run it, this is resizable and obviously by default, they're way too small. We can set our own width without having to sort of change anything simply by doing so from the code. So here's what we have to do. All we have to do is self dot table widget, and then we can dot set column width and let's say 0, 0400 and now let's just run it and see if there's any any difference and this is what we have so here we just set the zeroth column so essentially the first column if we're indexing by zero and we set this column to have a width of 400 pixels now obviously we can make this much smaller so i would say here maybe go for 200 or 250 so this is essentially what we have now let's just go back here and verify the names of the columns. So if we move this um, down and just have this to be the age. All right, so that's good enough. Now going back to the code, we can set the column width for every other column. So here we say table widget dot set column width. And now we can give it maybe a, since it's the age, we can give it a shorter, um, values is maybe 100 and then self dot table widget dot set column width for the i'm sorry here this should be the first column and then for this one the second and now we can say maybe uh 250 and that's pretty much it so just to give an overview here we're setting the fi a fixed column width or the default column width and we're giving it a value in pixels and then here we're just saying which column we're giving this width to so here is the zeroth column here it's the first here it's the second so essentially we're indexing by zero now if we run it and we check the different sizes that we have here are our new sizes obviously we can still increase them so maybe we should go ahead and do that so maybe if i change this to 350 and i change this to 250 right here and i can run it and this is what I have. So this is okay. Now we have a def default scroll bar if the thing is too big, but essentially it's sort of almost exact. So now that we've set the column width, our next goal right now is to actually load some data into this table. So actually visualize what's inside this table. So I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to call this function load data and it's going to have self. And now here I'm just going to call it so self dot load data. So here's what I want to do. So I want to load this data. So how am I going to do so? Where am I going to be able to get this data from? 
So in a general application, obviously, ideally, you have this data within a database, be it an SQL database, so MySQL or SQLite, or maybe perhaps a NoSQL database like MongoDB or Firebase, real-time database, or pretty much any other database. And you would get this data from this database and you would display it in the table. In this case, what we want to do, what we want to do is actually just take some sample data and display it because obviously here it's not focused on the database itself but on the act of putting things inside the table so what i'm going to do is create some sample data so i'm just going to create a list of people and this list of people is going to have these different people objects with this different type of data within them so here i can have for the first object and the objects are going to be hash tables or python dicts and this is where I'm going to be able to store this data and then take it and put it inside the table. So name, and I give this name maybe a John, and then I can give that person an age, and I can give that person an age of 45, or and an address of New York. And obviously, since we're inside a list, so we can create multiple versions of this Python dict for different types of people. So here I can create another one, so name, um, and then give it to, let's say, Mark. And then this is etc. etc. So I'm just going to copy it and make some minor changes. So here I can have this to be 40, and now I can let this person live in LA. All right, so now we have these two sort of um, hash tables inside this larger array or this larger list and now inside this list of people i want to take each person and translate each person to a row so this data like i'm going to repeat this could be taken from any sort of database so you can take this from an sql database that has sort of three columns or three attributes and they are name age and address you can just uh, take them from or extract them from this database read them from this database and then post them inside the table so that's just sort of what you can do or you can get this in the exact sort of JSON format from a NoSQL database such as MongoDB and put them inside the table. So here's how we're going to do it. So we're going to create a for loop. So for person and people, here's what we're going to do for each person. We're going to self.table dot table widget dot set item. And now with set item, we're going to specify a location for this item. So this item is going to be inside a sort of box or, and this box is like a cell and the cell exists on one row and one column. So let's say um, row and then zero index and then qt widgets dot q table widget item. And then we're going to just give it the um, person sub name. All right. Now, what is row in this case? Now, we can set row to be zero. So row is equal to zero. And then increment row as we go. So row equals row plus one. However, we must note one important thing is that when we set the columns manually inside here, so inside this part, we set the columns manually according to the fields that we know we are certain that we're going to have. So here we are certain we're going to have a name. We are certain we're going to have an age and we're certain we're going to have an address. However, what we're not certain about is the number of people we're going to have to display inside this table. So this is why we do not set a defined um, row count. So when we're going to do that, we're going to do that inside the load data function. So the way we're going to do it is simply just self dot table widget dot set row count and we're going to give it the number of people with, within this list so let's say the length of people all right so this is how many rows we're going to have so in this case we're going to have two rows so now now that we have we start at row zero we increment row as we go let's just run this show the output and then i'm going to explain exactly how this code works so this is the output that we have so obviously we only sort things within the first column 
So we have the name and we have the first name of the first person, so John, and we have the name of the second person who is Mark. Now let's just see exactly how this code is working. So I'm just going to scroll up a bit and then open up the application again. So here's what we're doing. So we set the row count to be the number of people. Obviously, we're filling in all the people inside the table. So we set the row count to be the number of people. We start at row zero. So the first cell that we fill is the cell with row um, with row zero, uh, with row index of the row is zero, and the index of the column is zero in this case. So obviously here, this could be more dynamic, but in this case, it's a fixed type of column thing. So we have only three columns and they're indexed at zero, one, and two. So at row zero and column zero, I want to put person sub name. And in this case, we're still at the first person. So I want John. And then in the second iteration at row one and column zero, so row one here and column zero, we're still in the name column. I want to set the value of this cell to be the person sub name. And in this case, the person is Mark. Now we can have the exact same thing for the last two columns. So here's what we're going to do. So for column number one, so we're, we're saying here the second column or the first, if you refer to the first one as the zero column. And now we want to say it's person sub age. However, one thing to note here is that we usually put strings inside this table. So we just have to cast this into a string because here it's an int. And then in the last one, we just have to say at column two, we want to put person sub address. And now if I run it, let's just check out what the data looks like inside the table. So this is what we have. We successfully filled in the data from the, um, from the data that we have within the lists from the Python hash table into the table in PyUD5, the Q table widget. And this is how we have them. So obviously we can add more and more data and this would increase dynamically because we are setting the row count to be according to the number of data items or the number of data points. So let's just paste this here and say, um, for example, George, and then we can give this an age of 30 and an address of London. All right, so running it, this is what we have. So we have these people within this um, the table and it displays all of their data in a sort of nice and neat fashion. Now, obviously you can change the font size and the font color here, just the same way we did it by styling PyPD5. So if you are interested in styling these, styling the font, styling the colors, and as well as styling the background and the different type of ways that we can create nice layouts in PyPD5, you can refer to a previous video that I have on specifically about styling PyQt5 widgets and dialogues. So that's basically it for this PyQt5 tutorial. Stay tuned for more and obviously I'm going to tackle more and more of the PyQt5 widgets. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the next one and bye bye.